You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast. And this is show number 516 for Sunday, the 1st of September, 2024. Where dreams begin. Hello and welcome to this week's Disney Dream Girls. My name is Michelle Young and together with my jolly good chum Jane Phipps, we are your guides to the place where dreams begin. Well, guess what? I am back from the USA battling through the jet lag, but I have my jolly good chum from the USA, Anthony Markham, to join us this week as I start unpacking my monster trip. Hello and welcome, Anthony. Hello, Michelle. How's that jet lag? Uh, Brutal. It was (laughs) 3.30am when I got to sleep last night, so yeah, I love a bit of jet lag. Oh, you're still on, you're still on East Coast time, just like me. I am still on East Coast time, and uh, I am still not fully recovered from the trip because it ended with a dilemma. Oh no! So, what would you do, dear listener? You're at the airport. You know you've got an indirect flight. I was going from MCO at four o'clock up to Boston where I had a two and a half hour layover and then hopping across the pond with Virgin Atlantic. The first airline was Delta. When all of a sudden over the loud tannoy, hi there guests, if you are travelling on such and such flight, we are overbooked and we were wondering if we had any passengers with no exact flight details that would mind having $900 to swap onto a later flight. Well, what would you do? Hmm. So I went to the desk and I said, look, I'm in no rush to get back on Thursday, but I do have a connecting flight. Oh, we were looking for someone who could just change the one leg. Oh, okay, no worries. Went and sat down. Then the offer went up to $1,000. They weren't getting any takers. And then my name got called. So I went over. Okay, there is a direct flight from MCO that gets you into Heathrow. It means waiting at here at MCO for two hours, but you'll land three hours earlier in Heathrow and we'll give you $1,000 and you'll be sat in your same cabin class. No brainer. Um, absolutely. Better flight, not indirect, and $1,000. But I had to wait until the last person boarded the plane. And if there was a spare seat, I would sit in it. If there wasn't a spare seat, ka time. Okay. Alas, somebody checked in for the flight but did not board. No ka Oh, no. I'd already almost mentally in my head booked a trip. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, ooh, uh, here's another stay. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Hey ho. So that's that was the end of trip dilemma, and it was a good dilemma to have. If it would have paid off, it would have been a very nice little welcome bonus. But it didn't. But I got home safely, and I have lots of things mentally to unpack as well as physically from the old Caseroonies. But I gather because you're going later in the year, we've got a few things we're going to talk about with regards to the parks and some of the extra special things that I did, such as an upcharge party. Oh, yes. Um, You went to Mickey's Not So Scary, right? I did. And last year I went to Mickey's Very Merry. And I know on your upcoming trip, you have the dilemma, do you do Mickey's Very Merry? Yes. Um, Well, since you just did it last year, um, how would you compare Mickey's Not So Scary to the Very Merry Christmas Party? And which do you think is a better value? Oh, that's a tricky one. Because for me, I feel, in my opinion, the Halloween party has a better offering than the Christmas party. But I suppose it depends on the timing of your trip. Because if you're going on the period sort of just before Christmas up to just after Christmas, you can get a lot of the offerings like the parade actually in the park because they do offer it, I think, from the 22nd, 23rd in the park and you don't have to go to the party. Mm, True. Mm -hmm. The takeaway gift was cookies 
and there's only so many cookies you can eat even though they were like plastic packaged and I did bring quite a few home it's not the same as candy and mm -hmm. for me the vibe just wasn't there and I didn't feel the offering was as good in comparison mm -hmm. to what I got out of Mickey's very Mickey's not so scary Halloween party but shall I tell you a bit more about the Halloween party yeah how did it compare to the one that we did I think it was what two years no three years ago I know two years ago. yeah yeah two years ago well first thing is the price went up <laughs> shocker <laughs> shocker <laughs> And a lot of the nights sold out very, very quickly this year. Mm -hmm. You are able still to do an add-on to the add-on, which in my mind, I just don't get why people would pay almost $200 for a Halloween party and then pay to go and eat at a table service or mm -hmm. use that time to go and have a dessert party because there are ways of mm -hmm. seeing the fireworks without paying that upcharge experience. I didn't do any of that anyway. With, there's so much projection technology now. You, you don't have to be right square in front of the, in the middle of the hub to, to get a good viewpoint. So True. True. But anyway, the mm -hmm. Halloween party, as always, allows you entry from four o'clock. Now, if you're like myself and you are a day guest, you can literally be in the Magic Kingdom any time you want, but you do have to get your wristband for the party. Mm -hmm. This year, we didn't arrive till half past five. We didn't want to be doing any of the attractions with the lower crowds because we'd already had a, a reasonable turn at doing some of the attractions. So we went through half past five, no wait, got our wristband, and then they sort of skew you down a back walkway where you get a gift bag and a regular small size bag of M&Ms. Down there, there were some of the usual statues that you see. There was a DJ stage, which was new. I hadn't seen that before. Ooh. Brought a lot of energy. She was calling out to guests saying, love your outfit, this, that and the other. And then lower... Okay. That's a fun addition, actually. It was, but it just seemed a little bit weird because, yes, she was getting the vibe going for the party, but, again, the cast members want you to walk through this walkway. So people mm -hmm. sort of may have wanted to stay in Boogie a bit, but they couldn't. And then mm. a bit lower down, Cruella was on an elevated platform and there was fun to be had because she spotted some Dalmatians coming into the party. Oh, <laughs> oh okay, that... That would definitely be fun. Mm -hmm. That was, and how that cast Cruella managed to survive in Florida heat at 5.30 in a third coat that, was beyond me. Oh my gosh. I wonder, do you know if it was, if they had other villains come out at any point or is it always um, Cruella throughout the From whole evening? what I gather, it was Cruella all evening. Okay. So apart from riding a few attractions, there isn't anything really that much to do until seven o'clock when the party kicks off, unless mm -hmm. you wanted the mini Halloween sipper. Oh, did you have to queue for it early? Yeah, the queue started forming around four o'clock at Sleepy Hollow Refreshments, and oh, they weren't. Lord. They were rumored to start selling at about quarter to seven. I gather they had 250 per night to sell. Mm. And once those 250 went, that was it. And each guest could buy two. Okay. Um, you're a big Hocus Pocus fan. And I did mm -hmm. message you and say, Anthony, can I enable a purchase for you? <laughs> and I was good. Yeah. We, we sort of sat and reflected about it and I thought... Do I want to waste two hours of my life standing in a line to get some plastic mm -hmm. junk that I'm not a Hocus Pocus fan, so I would have done it for you, my lovely, but mm -hmm. nah. I just went and got the Mickey popcorn bucket because he lights up and he's cute. And who else wants to eat popcorn out of Mickey's bum? Come on. <laughs> Although it was quite funny. The number of people that were like me going in the queue and saying, yeah, I'll have the popcorn bucket, but no popcorn. They were giving it out in uh, separate boxes if you wanted, but no thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So that was $26. They started selling that about quarter to seven to people with the wristbands. Cast members were ushering those without the wristband to the exit so that, you know, by seven o'clock, there was nobody in the park without proper wristbands and permission to be at the party. So we all know the big question is, did Michelle get to see the cadaver dams after trying for four parties? I still can't believe you hadn't caught them before. I can't. You know, I can't believe them. But sometimes when I'm wandering around the Magic Kingdom, I get this surreal experience thinking, am I in Disneyland or am I in Walt Disney World? And I get completely lost of where I am and the whole park's mushing to one and I forget where I'm going. But I waited at Frontierland. They're on the balcony to the side of the Country Bears musical jamboree. And I waited and I waited and I saw them. They came out. They were fantabulous. I've got some video to share at some point. And at the mm -hmm. end, three hitchhiking ghosts came out in the middle of the Grim Grinning Ghosts barbershop version the cadaver dance did it was oh phenomenal that's so cool and then they walked up and they took over from the cadaver dance and they did a little bit of a a show you know posing i suppose for pictures etc mm -hmm. in the same place and i went while it was still fairly light so mm. i got light pictures so it looked really good oh yeah i can't wait to see those then I thought, right, I need to have a character meet and greet. We originally mm -hmm. had a plan of cadaver dance, hitchhiking ghosts, and then we thought we'd go to the Mickey meet later on. So we went to go to the mini meet. Mini meet was meeting with Donald, Daisy, and Goofy. Now, in mm -hmm. previous years, these have all been four separate queues that you go round the storybook meet area in the big top circus and i'll be mm -hmm. honest in past years the lighting has been rubbish the pictures rubbish even the photo pass pictures rubbish mm -hmm. so I, I was i went because i knew caroline would really love to do this and when we got there it was one queue that were meeting together oh perfect it was about an hour and 15 of the most brutal slow moving queue ever oh. Because the four characters were interacting with each guest and spending quite a lot of time with them. Aww. And some of the bigger family groups were like, oh, have a picture with little baby. Have a picture with this child, this child, this mm -hmm. child. So some guests were taking eight, nine, ten minutes for their whole family portraits. And also the line accepted people who had DAS. So if you came mm -hmm. up and you had a DAS you were able to join the line ahead of us. So that slowed it down a little bit. Hence, it was such a long wait. Was it like that for every single character meet? Because, ooh, I that don't, would eat up a whole party. Yeah, I don't know because I didn't get to do any other character meets. By the time I'd waited for Popcorn Bucket, Cadaver Dance, Hitchhiking mm -hmm. Ghosts, I think it was nearly nine o'clock by the time we left. It was just after nine, sorry when we left that character meet and greet and it was very cute we got a printed card with the four autographs on as well which i thought was very mm -hmm. slick um so it was coming up to fireworks time at ten fifteen. so i got caroline sat in a really nice place so she could have a good view and i just went round like a lunatic to get trick and treat and i'm going to share a top tip with our listeners if you're going to the party okay Go to Mickey's Phil Her Magic. In my opinion, okay. it was the best meet because as you go in, before you got to the actual screen where the seating area is, there's two barrels. Well, I always go to mm -hmm. both. I'm sorry, I go to both. I double up. I've waited a long time because some of the queues were like eight minutes, ten minutes long. So I, I dipped at both. And then on the exit, there was also another opportunity to double dip. So you got mm -hmm. four lots of candy for one line. And a lot of the other ones that were fairly long waits, like Columbia Harbour House, there was only two barrels. So that's my top mm -hmm. tip. I recall a fairly long one over in Frontierland. Was that 
over near Big Thunder. Did yeah. They still have that one this year. They did, but I didn't get that far into the park, to be quite honest, because I just basically stayed at that one, Columbia Harbour House, and then mm-hmm. the other one was something new and not very publicised for this year. The villains took over Fairy Tale Hall and transformed it to <sighs> Scary Tale Hall. Oh, I've seen a couple of photos and that did look really fun. Um, who all did you see in there? So one line you got to see Maleficent, the other line you got to see the Evil Queen and they were on a raised stage and they Mm. stood underneath the princess of the film franchise they belonged to and I thought that was such a clever touch. Makes perfect sense, yeah. Now you couldn't get a picture literally stood next to them and you couldn't get an autograph but you could take an individual picture of the character and they posed, they interacted Mm -hmm. Or you could turn and take a selfie. And then at the end, there was a treat barrel. And the line wasn't very big at all. Literally, I was into character land within 30 seconds to a minute. Oh. I don't think people knew about it because this was only the fourth party. So Mm -hmm. they were meeting, like I went a few times between sort of like 9.30 and midnight. And they were always there. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't recall seeing anything about it in the media no. before the party. So mm-hmm. I think that's something they're trialling out to see how good it went because there was a fair few high ups at the sort of end of the queue and you know the high ups because they're not in a cast member uniform but they have a pin and a suit and a clipboard or an iPad. Mm-hmm. So that was good. One thing I will say is the parade had some changes from the previous years that I've seen and it was lovely to see. We got an amazing view in Frontierland. We sat opposite Sleepy Hollow Refreshments. Mm -hmm. That's a a good spot. Well, we realised there was some seating by the Christmas shop. So we lifted the seating and I was able to sit on a chair and watch the parade and I've got some amazing videos of little bits that I'm going to start sharing. It was phenomenal. Bearing in mind, though, the Headless Horseman comes out five minutes before if it's dry, and then Mm -hmm. the parade. It can take about 35 minutes from the start to the end. And if you're watching the second parade, Headless Horseman's out at 10 past 11. It didn't finish in Frontierland till about... 20 to 12 well by the time that would have been main street it would have been after midnight and that meant no getting into lines for attractions because the lines for attractions and trick-or-treating finished at midnight i feel the candy was not as generous as past i did see people saying oh they emptied candy into our bags not in my experience i didn't see that at all um, so I felt it was not as generous as past. There was no peanut butter squares or the snicker brownies that I particularly like. Megan Murnier managed oh. to guess how much candy I got. I got something like 7.7 pounds of candy from my attempts, which I must say <laughs> it isn't as many attempts as I would have normally had. It was broken down with a lot of peanut M&M's um, a lot of lifesaver gummies, Skittle gummies and Skittles. And then there was a lot of fun size Snickers, fun size Twix. And then those mini, like almost one bite treats. And there were Snickers, Twix, Starburst and Free Musketeers. That made up the mix that I got. And I was happy with the quantity that I managed I got to see the fireworks. The fireworks were amazing. But that was my night. And I think if you're going to Mickey's Not So Scary with the four, I'm going to do everything. It's physically impossible to do that. Pick a priority list. Make sure you know what you're going for. When it Mm -hmm. got to five to 12, I decided going through Scary Tale Hall to enable Caroline to see the villains was our top priority. So we didn't go into a ride queue which a lot of people ran for Seven Dwarfs. Main Mm -hmm. Street remained open as in the shops because they want people to go through and look for the limited time merchandise, which there always is. There was a limited edition lug bag, 
with not so scary on super cute mm. on the back of it there was like a um a vinyl stick on spider web and i'd seen a lot of people saying that this had rubbed off so that wasn't for me mm -hmm. but what did you want up getting from the party i didn't wise? buy anything oh okay there was a 185 dollar sorry 175 dollar not so scary special pumpkin and they made 10 and you to get in line at four o'clock for it with your wristband and i looked at it and you could you could buy that size pumpkin for round about 55 60 dollars in the store so you're paying mm -hmm. all that extra just to have some sort of transfer put on it and i felt no that's too much money it's mm -hmm. no so I didn't bother with that. I'm not a big pin collector. I wasn't keen on the Halloween jersey or anything like that. So I didn't buy any merch at all. And I didn't eat any speciality food or drinks. Because in my opinion, from what I'd seen, it all looked very Instagrammy, but not Insta-yummy. Mm -hmm. mm. So yeah, That does tend to be the way <laughs> most of their food is. That, but... Yeah. Is it worth the money? In my opinion... It is a fantastic event. Is it weird doing Halloween two months in advance of Halloween? Absolutely. Is the weather brutal? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Some parties, like when we were there, the following party, the rain was so bad, Disney gave out either a gift card refund or a one-day ticket to revisit the Magic Kingdom at any point within the next year because there was no parades wow. rides were down outside character meeting greets were out the party was an absolute washout so just bear that in mind if you're planning to go august through early september consider the weather i saw lots of pictures of people's candy being ruined because of rain i saw lots of children leaving early on that particular night because of the weather we were incredibly fortunate there was not one drop of rain that fell between 5 p.m and when we got back at 1 a.m and oh, that, that was amazing. amazing because previous years i've maybe not seen headless horsemen the parade's been cancelled or delayed or they've only done one parade so well, they cut shows short yeah, yeah. And I know for someone like yourself, you would have loved to have seen the Hocus Pocus stage show. It's just not something I prioritised. I watched it before I went on YouTube, and that satisfied mm -hmm. me. And let's be honest, they don't, they haven't really changed that in the past few years. So, no, I can understand that. Yeah. So for me, I felt the party gave me value. If I was going to go again during that time period or the time period running up to Halloween, would I do it again? For me, I think I'm now done with the Halloween party because okay. I got my to-do list. I got cadaver dance. Mm -hmm. And that was the one thing I really wanted. Everything else was great. And on the other nights when the party was in full swing, the other parks were quite busy. But during that day where there was a party in the evening, Magic Kingdom was dead. So it was great mm -hmm. to go to the park on those days because people were obviously not having a hopper ticket like us from the UK get and they were choosing to use the other parks instead. So that's a top tip. Look at when the party is and go maybe to the Magic Kingdom that night and see the fireworks on a different occasion. Oh, one, one all-important question though. Mm. Did you dress up? I kind of did. I didn't wear an outfit specifically like before I've been a doll whip or I have been Snow White. This year I had a really cute Halloween print dress and I had some ghost ears, earrings and some um, pumpkin earband. Because of the weather being so warm, I just didn't want to feel uncomfortable. And because this was a thin cotton dress... I felt I made a good choice. If you're going in August, really consider that outfit because you don't want to be wearing a really big gown because you will literally melt because it is still quite hot going up to mm. eight, nine o'clock at night. It's like 80 degrees still. 
yeah, I, I made a unfortunate costume choice in 2019 when I went. I was full out Captain America, <sighs> with shield and leather, and oh, I was miserable that night. <laughs> yeah. So thinking to when you go to your trip later on in the year, would you do the Christmas party? Now it's been quite a while. I'm at least ten years ago. I I did do the very merry Christmas party then, mm-hmm. um, and it was fun. Um, of the two, I do think the not so scary party is probably a little bit more fun. Mm. Um, but I'm actually considering more Jollywood nights just because it's different. Do you know what? I think Disney learned a lot last year and I see this year's offering being fantastic. So if you go, I can't wait to go in your phone because it sounds fabulous. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I do need to do a little bit more research. You just like price difference between the two events. Um, mm. Because you don't but... get the, you know, the hot chocolate. You don't get the cookies. I think last mm-hmm. year they offered um, a coaster as you left. As far as I know, this year there's no plans to give a free gift. So, mm-hmm. mm. We'll put a pin in that. I may have updates for you later about that. <laughs> Ooh, we will talk at a later day. So yes. I think that wraps up this show all about Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party, but perhaps you'd like to come back and talk a little bit more about one or two of the other things that I did while I was away. I'd love to. You you did some uh, definitely new and unique experiences that I can't wait to talk about. Fantastic stuff. Well, to keep up to date with what myself and Jane are up to, because she'll be boarding the Disney Dream any day soon, make sure you follow us on Instagram at Dis Dream Girls. We have our podcast family page where I'll be sharing some of the videos and content, and that's on Facebook. But also, those people who support our show and keep it advert-free are Patreons. A big hats off and thank you to you. I've already posted some little bits of treats and goodies. And I think one of them was the uh, entire spin-around carousel of progress. So find us on patreon.com forward slash Disney Dream Girls. And for a few dollars each month, you get access to exclusive audio and content from Jane and myself. But until next week, it's a goodbye from me. And a goodbye from me.